Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another episode. Yeah, you've already been introduced to uh, Lincoln Co. and, and Gilly? Gilly. Gilly? Gilly. Yes. Gilly. <laughs> no, I'm actually serious. We just went through this. I have a real problem with G and G. Anyways. Gilly? <laughs> I totally forgot. Anyways, we're going to take a tour through this automotive factory and uh, we're going to take a tour through the Lincoln Co. See, I can do Lincoln Co. very easily. What are we going to go, where are we going to go first, Toby? Uh, we're going to follow the process of the car, so we're going to go to the pressing shop first. Yes. Okay. And then we're going to follow it as the cars get uh, put together. So it's going to be pressing shop and then... And then the welding shop and then the painting shop. The last one is the assembly shop. Very cool. If you want to see what these workers have for lunch, what they do for fun while they're working here at the factory, you can check out my last episode where we kind of were introduced to the factory and as, a, as a bit of a more of a worker's lifestyle kind of thing. I grew up in Detroit, so heavy machinery is something I really enjoy enjoy looking at because uh, the industry in Detroit is very similar to the industry here in this factory. It'll be interesting actually to compare the two. Uh, is that correct? 300,000 cars per year? Yes. Yes, is the maximum potential capacity which works at, uh, at like, is that 800? This factory or of all? Just, just, just this factory. factory. Blue one is 05 yes. and the green one is 01. Yes. So these forms, each one, each one of these is, a, is designed to press out a different component stacked on top of each other. So this might be a hood, this might be a fender, that might be uh, who knows what. What kind of interesting things are trapped within those, uh, those two halves? I used to do plastic injection in Detroit, you know. So I owned a mold base. It was a lot smaller than this one. Oh, here it goes. So this is for the uh, left side uh, panel. And then you have things like this, where you hook up uh, water, and so you can have it cooled, or hydraulics. You have the hydraulics working in the inside. So all of these little cables and stuff, articulating little, little doodads inside pulling and pushing and prodding. You can see this part right here. All of those are inserts where they're gonna go in, the thing's gonna press and then it's gonna come out. So cool. So 15 people operate this whole set section. Actually it's 47. 47? Yeah. 50? You said 50, not 15. 15. Sorry. Okay, I thought you said 15. Bad. Like My 15 bad. people? Shit, that's just these guys. <laughs> yeah, but if they need to change a die here, they just open the door, one goes out this side, and then someone goes in, right? I mean, that thing's hauling ass. thing right here is a robot and so it's gonna take the next uh, the next set of hoods and it's gonna come around and it's gonna roll all the way to the next area yeah so that line uh, in the concrete is is just like a sort of a special type of tape so you can move the tape into different configurations based on where you want the cars to go and how you want them to pick up loads and stuff it takes uh, some of the heavy lifting away from from humans that might injure themselves or also helps the bottom line of the company so automation man it's the future so this is like something wrong you have to watch out for this you have to watch out for this yes 
this is like a uh, maybe a dirty welding or something. Yes. This one have a dent. Something hit it. It cannot be productive. Yeah, you have to throw it away. What's wrong with this one? This one looks fine. <laughs> Quality control. Okay. An inspection table. came by said you got to be wearing some sleeves because up ahead there's some welding so they're gonna bring us some sleeves for our arms I really love these kind of places they really excite me you know every single piece of the puzzle that makes up a car is is here you know all you need to do is put the pieces together slot A goes in channel B and so on and so forth so this stamping area has two vehicles, the 01 and the 05, parts for, parts for all of them. And as the storage of these parts dwindles, uh, door panel, hood panel, interior hood panel, fenders, all sorts of things, then the stamping machines, which are the two lines in the adjacent room, start pumping them out. And there's gotta be a pretty interesting logistical system set up so that they're like, I know we produce X number of this, X number of this, so we'll constantly be topping up the hood, topping up the side panels, topping up all of these different uh, different parts, and uh, just to kind of keep the keep the machine going in order to have uh, maximum productivity. Right here, that's a sunroof. It looks like a sunroof, and then we've got the outer areas of the hoods there, and then these are the hoods for the 05, the SUV. Pretty neat. That looks like a Wiley Coyote door. Yeah. You know, like the huge door next to it. It's like a dance. It's like a dance. Yes. All of these machines are dancing together in okay. perfect harmony. Every single movement here, every single moment of these robots' uh, process has calculated to maximize the amount of time the part stays in its position, to maximize the amount of time it takes to move to the next position. It's incredible. The whole thing, the whole thing is amazing. It's like, it's hypnotic actually. 487. Do they have names? Hey, you gotta go fix George. Phyllis is having a problem. For some strange reason, I thought that automotive factories were linear, like a very long line. That's what I thought. Right, right. Yeah. But but this factory is, it's like a, it's like an S almost. You know. Yeah. I mean, okay, okay. So you start with raw components that way, and as they go up and down, they're becoming more complete, and then the finished cars come out it's that side.
You know, when you look at like a door panel being affixed to another, the inner and the outer door panel being affixed together, or even this area over here where you see a larger, uh, larger panels being affixed together for the main chassis of the car, you start to forget that outside of this area in the, in the pre-stamping area, it's just flat, you know? Well, it's just interesting. Sometimes when you're looking at assembly lines yeah. and you get farther into it, you start to forget the raw material. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because we're looking at doors and hoods and car chassis, but like everything just comes up just so flat. fast. Yeah. It's just flat steel, flat aluminum, you know? Yeah. It's and it turns into a car you can drive away. It's pretty interesting. When I was younger, I used to love watching assembly lines, assembly TV lines. shows. You yeah, know? I see. Oh, I, I couldn't get I enough of it. In this factory, we only use half of our ability to do the production. Okay. So if uh, we got more orders, you're you're prepared to do more. Uh, the speed uh, to produce or assembling a car, which is can be like twice faster as now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you could really you could yeah. crank it up if you yeah, wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no matter what they're making in China, there always has to be a man banging something with a hammer. <laughs> That's an essential part of the process. Yeah. 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 They don't even need it. They're just like, uh, we need to hire a guy to do the yeah. hammer metal. So this area over here is, uh, is laser measuring. So it comes down the line, and at this point in time, the, they use lasers to make sure that all the I's are dotted, all the T's are crossed, and everything is uh, to the appropriate dimension. And then if not, they shoot it out of the building. Rejected. And it lands about a mile and a half down the way in a river. No, none of that doesn't happen, but you know. Which episode of Star Wars was it when he got stuck in the factory and their hand got stuck in the in the machine? Ah! Yeah, Anakin went to the factory with the bugs to fly, but the yeah, bugs yeah. made all the weapons and the That's robot the, factory. The episode two or three. It was it was, it was the bad it was the really bad one. Oh, the I pace, see. the pace. Yeah, where you should be now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. plans, uh, where you should be, an actual number. Yeah. yeah. Those three numbers at the top. So, so the plan is 370. We're, yeah, we are at 199. Uh, and 208. No, no. no. The, uh, the, the, the total for the day should be 370. 370. Where they should be at this point in the day is 199. 199. And, and they're they doing better. Better, yeah. yeah. So, they're, so they're 10 over normal. Yeah. yeah. Jio. Sometimes it's motivating to see that that number in front of you. I'll tell you what, one thing about this factory, ooh boy, it is clean. You could eat off these floors. My dad uh, in Detroit, he worked as a bus mechanic for the transit system in Detroit. Oh boy, those factories were dirty. You did not want to eat off those floors. But they were dealing with a lot more older, older machines. These are brand new machines. I guess it's easier to keep things clean when they're when they're brand new off the line. I always love the smell of diesel fuel. I got that from my dad. It reminds me of the factory he used to work at. All right, we are finished with the welding shop. Now, now painting, right? Painting? Yeah, there's some heavy paint in there. Am I gonna come out like purple and speckled with a bunch of paints and stuff? Is it like paint flying everywhere? I can wear these, right? I look cool. Like Casey Neistat. Smile. Show. <laughs> Smile. I very rarely feel short, but I feel very short right now. <laughs>
Yeah, the Blues Brothers. It's 106 miles to Chicago. We got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes. It's dark, and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. He's 10 centimeters taller than me. I thought you were from Detroit. I am from Detroit. Mo Motor City. Right? Motor City. Mo Motown. Motown. No, what did he say? He says, we're on a mission from God. Right? Wasn't that the thing? He's like, we're on a mission from God. Well, me and the Lord, we got an understanding. We're on a mission from God. Oh, wow. Hello, Dave. What are you doing, Dave? Just what do you think you're doing, Dave? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. Daisy, nice. Daisy. Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer to. This room is a lot more serious. I feel like things are a little bit more serious here. No messing around. I don't know what I expected, but I feel like there should be more noise. Very, very quiet. Just not even a hum, not even a hum of machines. It's just, just little incremental sounds. That's clean, man. They're cleaning the tape lines here at Lincoln Co. This place is clean. These guys are putting on the uh, adhesive for the, uh, the door panels and some of the plastic parts that'll be adhered a little bit later. It's funny, they're like, the really interesting stuff is happening upstairs where the painting is actually happening. Like the painting is going on there, we should go there. And I'm like, I'm so interested in every step of this production line. I could just sit right here and just enjoy watching and seeing how all these little intricate puzzles and jobs and procedures come together. Really, really cool. So these are coming pretty much right from the paint shop. Like, yeah, I don't smell any paint. I mean, they these are dry, right? Pretty much dry. Do they go through an oven? Again, it's just so damn quiet. Incredibly quiet. to me like that row that we just walked past was the main uh, one of the main painting and coating uh, assembly lines or painting lines and then at the very end of that it rises up into this corridor here and then floats there's cars inside that corridor and it's hot and drying so it's very ventilated and then by the end of it the cars come off the line come up into this area and get delivered to like a waiting area where in turn they'll go down below and then get uh, sealed and a bunch of that adhesive will be applied and then they will continue on and, uh, and get into the assembly process. These are the massive ovens that are sending hot air up to the assembly a drying line where all of the freshly painted cars are being uh, baked basically. Probably one of the louder areas simply because these hot heavy fans are, are pushing the air in and then pulling the air out. It's really an interesting uh, act of juggling, basically, as they're being juggled to the upstairs and then to the downstairs and then 
this process is added and then it's being passed to another area where another process is added. Each section is unique, obviously, painting and, uh, and doing the, uh, the coatings and then doing the assembly. But they're all juggling from process to process. All right, so this building over here is the assembly area. It's where a lot of the bells and whistles are added. And well, all of the bells and whistles, right? At the end of assembly, you have a finished vehicle. But unfortunately, there are some new models being uh, produced there and being assembled, and we're not allowed to show you. So I'll uh, give you some B-roll, some, some video that uh, uh, is, was given to me so that uh, I can kind of give you an idea of what goes on in there. I wish I could show you in person, but uh, we'll catch you later. All right, that assembly area, man, that was cool. It was huge, cavernous. It was a bunch of cars. There was a test area. There was a, there was a water area. They're spraying the cars with water to check the seals. And then there was an inspection area. Then there was a little testing area where they took it under these like really bright lights. There was cars driving everywhere. There was cars coming down from the ceiling. There was cars being delivered over the top. There was different machines doing different things. A lot of laborers. Then they took a break and there was these robots that were delivering things. And then the guys on break were kind of just chilling out. They had a 10 minute break, which is kind of interesting. There were these blue panels that they put on the sides of the cars in order to take them through the assembly line so they wouldn't get damaged. But it was like 10 temporary fenders and stuff. All of these things I would have liked to have talked to you about in there, but because they're doing these new models that they don't want to let the cat out of the bag about, I couldn't record a thing. Can I record this? No. How about this? No. How about this? No. How about this? No. How about this? Come on. No. Shut down at every, every stop. So that is it. That is how a uh, Lincoln Co vehicle gets made. Basically start to mostly finish I can't even show you the lot because the lot is full of a new model that's going to Europe and I can't quite tell you that secret. So uh, take it easy guys. Hey, if you want to listen to uh, any sort of uh, interesting uh, story diatribes, um, you can check out my uh, audio podcast on Patreon. Uh, please do so. Uh, I have a bunch of, uh, of audio podcasts there. If you want to make a donation, we chat uh, there as well as a bunch of different places and follow me on the journey. So thank you very much. We'll catch you on the next one. Jayo from Lincoln Co. How's it going guys? Welcome to another video. Look at this guy. Look at this guy over here. This is, uh, <laughs> this is see, Guaylo 6. Every, you miss this guy? Everywhere I go in China, I meet this big lump from Ningbo. This is Eric. He's from France. He lives in Beijing. And look at these two guys. Hey. Look at these two guys. Hey. Hola amigos. Mexicanos en China. Tan solo miren amigos, miren a nuestro alrededor, de verdad, es una cosa increíble. Tenemos aquí a nuestro amigo. You see that pagoda back there? That was built in 652. I'm a little bit underdressed. I could, I could have brought a sweater. You'd have to have very, very thick hair to find any use for that, those big wooden combs.